Hello, I'm John Van Luke Drummond, the Deputy Editor of Solicitor's Journal. Today I'll be putting questions to Lorraine Rogerson, who's the Independent Chair of Medco. She'll be giving a presentation at the Bon Solon Annual Expert Witness Conference on the 6th of November. Lorraine, to begin with, what is Medco? Medco is an independent, private company which um, has a board of directors who are all drawn from the member organisations which represent each of the sectors. That body um, is charged with overseeing the implementation of the government's policy um, on addressing um, soft tissue injury claims and in particular Medco is charged with the provision of and the enabling the sourcing of medical reports from accredited suppliers. So our job is to assess, review, monitor and audit suppliers so they can to accredit them and run a system which is the only way that these reports can be sourced. Obviously this is a huge change in the method of selecting experts mm -hmm. um, and there's obviously the mandatory accreditation as well that's been introduced. Mm -hmm. um, Medco have the remit of introducing this. Um, why? It's part of the policy, mm. um, very much part of the policy. So the law was changed to provide that from the 6th of April this year, you could only get a report from someone on the system. Mm. From the 1st of January 2016, you can only be on the system as a provider of medical reports, an accredited supplier, if you've passed the accreditation. So it's, it's, it's not... Uh, and either or, it was very mm. much part of the whole scheme. The scheme is that Medco should provide um, reassurance to, to the public and to, to, to government that the people who are providing medical reports in these cases are part of an accredited system, um, monitored, reviewed, audited, trained, and that the links, potential links between those and the instructors should be severed. Who has to do the training? Uh, what about very experienced experts? Oh yes, everyone. Everyone who, from the 1st of January, the law requires that every expert on the Medco system will need to have done the training and be accredited in order to be instructed. What does the training include? Medco has an accreditation subcommittee that's been working on this, in fact, since before Medco was set up. Mm. So there's been work being done on accreditation since before Medco was set up. We have had in place since since Medco was instituted an accreditation subcommittee which has been working with experts in this field who have been working on this and the way it's going to work is that we have um, will have um, contracted with suppliers to provide the training and accreditation um, these will these are well known well known in the field and the um, proceed, the process by which they were chosen was that um, there was uh, the accreditation subcommittee launched an expressions of interest round earlier in the year, which they had several um, expressions of interest. From that, they have undertaken a pre-qualification check and has examined the potential suppliers against various criteria, and they've chosen Bon Solon as one of these suppliers. Um, the um, Training will be launched on the 1st of October and the, so all those experts on the system will have an opportunity to go through the training and be accredited by the deadline of the 1st of January. And how many instructing parties are registered with Medco? We have um, up to date just, I think, just over 1,600 instructing parties and there are 260 MROs around 260 MROs and 700 direct medical experts registered on the system. And how many instructions have gone through the portal since Medco went live in April 2015? I advise I think there are just, about, just over 200,000 instructions. And what proportion of the instructions are through Tier 1 or Tier 2 or direct? I understand that over 190,000 of the instructions have gone to medical reporting organisations, MROs, and around 16,000 to direct medical experts. Some experts are registered in their own right and through an MRO. So, you know, the, 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 I can't give at this stage a sort of detailed breakdown of the data, but that's the current advice I have. Mm. What would you say are the current and future 
challenges that are going to face Medco? Um, the, it, it's been very challenging. Um, I have to say, it's been very challenging, very interesting. And clearly, one of the things that it's time for us to do, to do is to, to make sure that more people know what we're doing um, and understand um, what we're there for and how, how they can help. One of the issues which has struck me as being um, of most potential, and it's just em starting to emerge from our operational subgroup, which monitors day-to-day -day activity and takes reports from people about what's, what's happening in the, in the field, in the area of registered experts and the provision of reports, is some irregularities are coming forward. Mm -hmm. And when they do, we're able to, to step in and, and ask questions and give warnings and start to increase compliance with what might be ex the expected standards. Um, and the, the very fact that Medco is there is, is illuminating behaviours in, in this area. And this, it's a fast moving and um, largely unregulated environment. So there's some, you know, we're finding out new things all the time. And this enables us to, to develop the, the approaches, the, the regulatory approaches, and also gives the ministry and the stakeholders some idea of what's going on in terms of policy development. For, for policy development. The, um, basically, the challenge is to keep focusing on, on MEDCO's job. There's a lot of noise and concern and criticism of MEDCO, some of which would be, is, is because too much may be being expected of MEDCO or because people don't really understand the limits to what it's there to do. So we need to focus on properly administering within the law what we're there to do and to um, encourage you know, increasing quality and, and better behaviour in this area. Lorraine, thank you.